Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, today's tough topic is our identity, uh, particularly our identity as a man and woman in Christ. And there are lots of voices and influences out there regarding our identity, especially when it comes to our, our sexuality. Uh, a talk show host might tell you one thing, while a sports coach might insinuate something else while you're practicing and yelling at you. Your parents may say one thing, or perhaps nothing. Your teacher, another. And your classmates, another thing altogether. In a world where right and wrong is kind of up for grabs, pop culture often says that your identity is whatever you make it or whatever you want it to be. Um, but while that approach feels good for the moment, it leads to lots of long-term problems. And the scriptures and our faith in Christ gives us some firmer ground to stand upon, which we'll get into. But first, let's talk about uh, the group that faces these issues front and center. And since next week's Halloween, let me say something that will uh, scare every parent. Puberty, spooky, adolescence. Uh, that's, if that's not frightening, I don't know what is. Um, now, puberty is in the distant rearview mirror for many of us, so I think it's it's easy to forget kind of how nerve-wracking that can be and confusing going through puberty and adolescence can sometimes be exciting, but also confusing sometimes. So certainly I think we want to try to be sensitive to, to anyone, uh, but especially to young folks working through this kind of stuff. Um, people need to be heard, not ignored or belittled or made fun of. Kids, especially, are often looking for some guidance on uh, these matters. And I think it's really important that we try, even if we disagree or disapprove, we want to be allies, not adversaries, whenever possible. In other words, we need to care about people and, and show them that we care, even if there are times where we disagree or there might challenge their thought processes. Uh, we need to be slow to speak, quick to listen, and, and strive to be compassionate and empathetic in these conversations. It can be really tough trying to figure these things out. And, uh, and, and I don't know about you, but I certainly wasn't a perfect teen or preteen either. So what kind of guidance can we offer? Well, I think we start with some of the most foundational and fundamental aspect, the most foundational and fundamental aspect of our identity. For Christians, as the name kind of implies, the bedrock, the most enduring part of our identity, where we start, is our identity in Christ. In fact, we can look both to creation and to Christ. And while uh, many, many people, including many professionals, think identity comes from what you feel or what you do, uh, the Christian worldview is rather that our ultimate identity, our value, our worth, comes from our Creator and was redeemed by our Savior. Um, we don't have to, we are not fully responsible for it. God rather gives us. He, he created us and He made us. And our identity comes not primarily from our desires or the love that we give, but rather from God's enduring dying love for us. Now, I always say, if, if you think the world is, uh, if, if you don't buy the whole God concept of Jesus, if you think there's, the world is just random chance, there's no real right or wrong, well, I don't really blame anybody. If that's their presupposition, uh, I don't blame them for doing something that feels right to them. I'd probably do the same thing. But because I believe differently, because I have been loved by God, Therefore, I live differently. Um, we, as, as Christians, we learn, a, I think a good message for us today, one or a take-home point, is that we begin to appreciate that who we are, our, our being, our, our bodies, our souls, our mind, are, as Laura Lee's children's message said, we are, it's a gift. Your body, in all its parts, are a gift. So first of all, uh, 
Uh, thank yous, I think, are in order to God who gave us this gift. And, and the body that we received was not a biological accident or a genetic mix-up. It was, first and foremost, a gift. It was a gift, and the scriptures include instructions on how to best use this gift. Christians, we believe that our bodies are important, integral to who we are, and, and that they are a blessing. Um, kind of a misread of Christianity make, sort of makes the body seem very unimportant, but, you know, the actual scriptures uh, view the bodies as an important, as an, you know, you, you can't, it's an integral part of who we are. Other people may see the body, um, or just materialists may see the body as simply a tool we use to feel good, um, but we don't think the body is just a tool to feel good, but rather a tool by where we can do good works. Uh, the New Testament uh, for, is, is absolutely filled, the New Testament, with instructions for Christians on avoiding sexual immorality and self-centered living. In fact, you know, the amount and variety of Greek words used to describe those things that are out of bounds is uh, really kind of impressive and, and hard to follow when absolutely every one of them means. Now, the, the Hellenistic... Um, the Hellenistic, which was the worldview uh, back in Jesus' day of the Roman world um, in the first century AD, really was not really that different from our kind of current worldview and culture today. They were used to and okay with all kinds of, of stuff. And yet the, the New Testament repeatedly is urging Christians to be self-controlled. You see... Following Jesus is not just about our mind or our beliefs. I think sometimes it can, we can kind of interpret it that way, and we, we want to emphasize, and it's true, that it starts kind of with our heart and our mind, but it doesn't stop there. It's, um, our, our Christian world, our following Jesus, is, is also about you know, our bodies, which, we're in, uh, which are a gift. We take direction from the Lord, and again, the, the point, the number one point is we use these gifts uh, not just to serve ourselves, but in service to God and to others. Um, another really important concept that for Christians regarding identity uh, is faithfulness. Um, the faithfulness of God is where we start and of the faithfulness of our Savior who is faithful even to, to give up his life in order that we might be redeemed. I mean, faithfulness is so such a huge part of our, our, our faith, our belief, that we should be practically obsessed with it. We should be looking for ways we can be faithful in, in any area of our life. And so what's the best approach to anything, basically? But the, what's the best approach to sexuality? Faithfulness. The best way to be a good worker? Faithfulness. Uh, to be a good friend? Same thing, faithfulness. Best way, Christian way to live, period, is just to be faithful. Uh, just as we are you know, monotheistic, believing and faith, faithful to only one God and one Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, so too, in, in all areas of our life, uh, the, the goal is for that faithfulness to flow from all areas of our life, and we try to reflect uh, the, the covenantal, we might say, committed character of God's faithfulness in the way that we interact with others around us. And that includes uh, all and uh, even our most intimate relationships. Uh, so um, when we talk about something, though, that is so personal uh, to our us, it can be a little challenging, right, and, and a little uncomfortable. Uh, but while it's a big challenge in some ways to talk about something that's so personal, it's also a, a big opportunity. I mean, I really would like to like you to think about, all of us to think about it this way. Why not allow God to work on the most sensitive areas of your life? I mean, for starters, what's the best source for learning about what it means to be who we are? It's not in magazines or blogs or internet ads, but rather by listening to our Creator and our Redeemer. Our identity, including sexuality, 
is something we can allow God to impact. It's a way in which we can follow Christ. Uh, in fact, because our, our sexuality is such a personal, precious, and sensitive gift, God tells us it's, it's too valuable to just entrust to anyone, but is best used within a committed, loving relationship between husband and wife. Um, in, in other words, being a Christian is not just about the obvious public aspects of your life. It would be a radical witness, a wonderful witness, a challenge, certainly, if Christians also allowed God to inform and shape even not only the public parts, but even the private parts of our life. Um, and, and for singles, that means might mean using extra time and energy um, in a positive and even devotional ways. Um, now, dating could be a whole other sermon, could be a long time, but here's this, this if I had one, just one piece of advice, it would be don't date for fun, date to find the one. I'm not saying you can't, you know, that dating should be boring, it, it, but it, it, you don't have to worry about that. Don't date for a purpose um, to be aiming towards marriage, I guess. And for married couples, that means being faithful and committed to loving the one whom the Lord has gifted to you. And also on the other end, not placing that relationship above Christ, but serving Christ through your marriage. And, you know, you know, we can just be honest, right? None of our relationships will be perfect. None of us have been perfect. We all fall short. I mean, that's a fundamental, you know, admission of Christians. But, but that doesn't matter because of God's grace and forgiveness. It really doesn't matter how imperfect we've been. Um, our relationships can still be a reflection of God's faithful love. You know, thankfully, God doesn't demand perfection, but he does require that we, that we be honest, that we confess our sins and not try to justify or excuse them. We can find wholeness, uh, forgiveness, and support, uh, not in our sexuality or in fleeting pleasures, but in Christ. In, uh, in, in 1 Corinthians, Paul told us how to give thanks and please God. And he says, Do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you, whom you have from God? You are not your own, you, for you were bought with a price. So glorify God in your body. You see, worshiping God is not limited to a, a church service. Our bodies are temples of God's Spirit, and, and our lives are worship. And we give thanks and witness to God's great love and faithfulness with our lives, including the bodies that God gave us and redeemed from sin. And to, to bring it home, the triune God is all about faithfulness. Jesus is faithful to you and me in laying down his whole life for us. Even, even our struggles are a way for God's faithfulness to shine through as he forgives us and restores us. In, in, in the pressure's off in that sense because you might say we're playing with house money. We've got nothing to lose because even if we falter or fail, God will forgive us. But uh, if we are faithful and committed to one another and, and to one Savior, it can be a powerful witness to our Lord. So, we, we strive to let our goal be to, to live as faithful people, faithful in, in our relationships, faithful in obedience, and faithful to our Redeemer and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen.